Shabbat shalom. In the Talmud, we read about a character named Choni the Circle Maker. One day Choni was walking across the road when he came across a man planting a carob tree. How long does it take for a carob tree to produce fruit? Choni asked the man. 70 years, the man replied. Choni was astounded that the man would go through all the hard work of planting a tree that would not bear fruit in his lifetime. So the man explained, I was born into a world that had carob trees growing in it. As my ancestors planted for me, so I will plant for my children. Choni then fell asleep and slept for 70 years. When he woke up, he saw a man gathering carobs from that very tree. Are you the man who planted this tree? Choni asked. I am his grandson, the man answered. Choni thought, wow, I must have slept for 70 years. Choni roamed all over town. He searched and searched, but not a friend could be found. No one recognized him. They didn't believe him when, they told, when he told them he was Choni, the circle maker. Choni was distraught. He could not imagine himself in a world without the close bond of friendship. He exclaimed, give me friendship or give me death. And with that, he died. This week, we read in Parasha Nitzavim, I have put before you life and death, blessing and curse. But what does a life of blessing look like? The story of Choni, the circle maker, offers one answer to this question. A life of blessing is a life of friendship and connection with those who recognize and know us. For the past year and a half, we have been far too distant from one another. No longer can we take it for granted that we can just meet up whenever we want. And during this season of introspection, it's easy to see that it's the people in our lives who really matter. We've always known this, but it's all too human to put our work or other demands first, assuming that friends can wait. But after all we've been through, we know how important it is to not miss opportunities to honor the connections we have with one another. In Judaism, friendship is more than just providing social contact. Friendship provides us with sources of support, security, fidelity, compassion, love, and counsel. Yet, we don't often take a step back and consider the nuances of what it means to be a good friend. Moreover, we live at a time when we place such strong value on self-sufficiency that we don't always reach out to others or invite others to reach out to us. We largely want to present ourselves as not needing help and having everything under control. And we assume the same of others. We refrain from asking for help because we assume others are too busy to be involved. And while we may think about offering help and even give lip service saying, if you need anything, call me, how often do we really go out of our way to help? All of us can fall into the cycle of self-interest, not looking beyond our own immediate needs. But relationships in which we allow ourselves to be vulnerable can give our lives meaning. In Genesis, we read about an episode in Joseph's early life. He is found wandering in a field, and a man asks him, What are you seeking? And he answers, 
I am seeking my brothers. We know that Joseph has brothers, but this text suggests that Joseph is seeking connection. He needs deep friendship to feel complete. During this time especially, we need to help each other emerge from the darkness and find a shared path, whatever that path looks like, whether it's online, outdoors, in masks, we need one another. We need our community. Just like branches of a tree interwine and overlap and connect, we too are woven together. The Torah portion reminds us that we have the power to choose blessing. And choosing blessing means choosing to let people into our lives. We are meant to travel through life hand in hand. May you feel the warmth and comfort of community and of belonging. And may this be a blessing to you in the year 5782 and beyond. Shabbat Shalom.